the tide turns. We have seen in the latter months of 1993 a trend on the part of academics, finally picked up by the media, towards refutation of the contemporary urban legend of satanic ritual abuse which has been the foundation of entire consultation and therapy industries. The idiot fundamentalist effort to convince people that a worldwide conspiracy exists to breed babies from dysfunctional women, spread drugs, spread drugs, pornography, and snuff films, and snuff films in an effort to dominate the globe is finally being perceived to be a laughable fantasy. How long will it be until the McMartin trial joins the Salem debacle as a symbol of the American justice system gone wrong? Yet during the entire hoo-ha, real Satanists have, have been untouched by this witch hunt. Instead, children of Christian parents have come under the influence of their pastors and therapists and have accused family members and friends of being Satanists, often ruining their lives. And who can ignore the continuing media-touted scandal of child molestation perpetuated by Christian clergymen? This is all so well deserved. Behold the, the utter, utter desperation, desperation of Christianity in its, its last gasp to find an enemy that can frighten the sheep into their churches. This enemy is but a projection of their own misdeeds that stem from the heart of their anti-life creed. Let them feed on themselves as followers of the flaccid Nazarene should. Let them feed on themselves as followers of the flaccid Nazarene should. Church of Satan's Church of Satan spokespersons have been going on talk shows for years debunking this hysteria, yet now that official sources are coming to their senses, does anyone look to us and say, gee, you were right all along? Of course not. We were invited on these shows not as sources of truth, but as freaks, real live Satanists at whom the proles could gawk. However, we did not shrink from articulating the unvarnished truth of our beliefs, truth of our beliefs, which many label as brutal, fascist, animalistic. If people want to fear us, then let them fear us for the correct reasons. We made this effort so that there would be an accurate presentation of our beliefs, especially should the time come when we could face legal difficulties because of our affiliations. The real danger lies in the remaining influence of this mythology on law enforcement agencies. Tax dollars are still being wasted on seminars run by self-proclaimed experts who spread completely bogus information. The gullible local cops, wowed by jargon-laden presentations, swallow this stuff whole as it comes from apparent experts, and thus they help spread a panic by seeing signs of the devil's work in minor and typical crimes. Just recently, I was called in to examine evidence that satanic cult activity was the basis for vandalism of a house up for sale that had remained vacant for about a year. Prior to examining the site, I was told that certain satanic graffiti, satanic graffiti, an inverted cross, had inverted cross had been found, proof positive that this had been done by a local cult. When I got to the house, an old structure that is fairly isolated, I examined every room and the entire grounds. What I found was an old mattress in the living room with a collapsed card table next to it as well as two candles, one green, one pink. A small gold cross pendant was hung on the edge of the table, which seemed to have been removed by the wearer before going to sleep on the aforementioned mattress. The cross had sharp edges, but was not inverted. The only graffiti were various slogans such as, Nicole loves Mark. If there is hidden satanic significance, it escapes me. 
upstairs room, once belonging to a child as evidenced by the garish sports figure wallpaper, there was a copy of the Simon Necronomicon and a Ouija board. We all know that this paraphernalia is not part of authentic satanic ritual. Outdoors, the squatters have taken the lawnmower from the garage and cut a path through the overgrown grass to a section of the yard surrounded by pine trees. Here they mowed out a roughly circular patch about eight feet in diameter in which to sunbathe. There were no signs of ritualistic activity in this circle. So here was, at most, teenage dabbler stuff, but hardly evidence of a cult. This sort of incident has been repeated across the nation and, and has been inflated by the overactive imaginations of the unworldly into evidence for a broad-based conspiracy. I don't particularly care about the paranoid fantasies of the dysfunctional, but when members of the police are convinced that there are Satanists with nefarious plans lurking under the beds of innocent Americans, that is when we must insistently stand up and tell the truth about our beliefs. And tell the truth about our beliefs. And so we have been doing. I have been active in recent months as a consultant and expert witness regarding the practice of Satanism in cases concerning the religious rights of prisoners, individuals who have become members of the Church of Satan after their incarceration. Numerous prisons are very liberal where religious observances are concerned, and some even have multi-million dollar complexes to serve the needs of their inmate populations. Yet, when it comes to allowing Satanists to ritualize or even have their literature, there has been resistance from some institutional authorities. We have been making headway in this area by demonstrating our credentials as a legally recognized religious organization whose existence must be tolerated along with the other minority religions permitted. We do not seek special treatment for these incarcerated Satanists, simply that they be given equal treatment concerning religious practices. Also, we assist only those inmates who have joined our organization and profess Satanism that is consistent with our philosophy. It has never been the goal of the Church of Satan to take its place among the other world religions, with dutiful followers and neatly labeled congregations. No, Satanism will permeate the societies of the globe as a secular lifestyle. Indeed, Satanism has penetrated the culture in many ways, and obvious imagery has particularly conquered the heavy metal world. Yet our religion is often not taken seriously. This can be used as a strength, for Satanists continue to influence larger cultural movement without being recognized as such, except by the astute. And some of our Christian enemies do know what we stand for. We do not intend to turn the vast and sensate masses into Satanists. The masses will do as always and follow their inertia. However, however, in the, the growing, growing satanic, satanic age, age we, we shall find, find desired, desired situations and, and objects, objects a bit more, more easily obtainable and have had direct, direct recourse, recourse to justice. justice. In the interim, we will not be treated with any less respect than other religions. While the Christians have been tilting at straw men, we have continued to extend our influence through society. We have defended real Satanism, and our literature is wildly available so that our fellows may discover the name that best describes them. Meanwhile, the altruists slash egalitarians have continued to force situations into extremes so that even the dullard couch potatoes have come to see the error of this doctrine, reductio ad absurdum, works again. As always, we remain aloof from the hubbub with our cherished objects and individuals, and when the time comes, we push and direct the currents as we think they should naturally go. Our victory is assured, 
as we are in harmony with nature, avatars of the universe's order. We demand that those who are hired to administer justice, thus acting as agents of the state, must leave their religious prejudices at home. Not for nothing did our satanic founding fathers create a constitution that demands a separation of church and state. So enjoy the ringside Colosseum seats and the spectacle of Christians being thrown to Christians, but keep an eye on those credulous constables. As our influence continues, we will see real order based on natural law, not the criminal favoring morass enshrined in today's justice system. And don't be surprised as some of those men and women in blue who aren't the least bit gullible, put on Baphomets when their badges come off.